Welcome back to the core Dungeon Framework tutorial series. In this video, we'll discuss the organization of the project and what each of the objects and scripts are used to do. To begin, find the Hierarchy window. If this is not visible in your project, go to View and select Hierarchy to create a new copy of it. The framework is composed of five folders which contain different aspects of the project. The first one, Framework Documentation, has two scripts that actually contain documentation information about the project. They are a formal and technical introduction to everything that the project contains and how to get started as a creator. There is one script for the framework overview and one script that documents the NPC kit that allows us to create the enemies that can be found in all the dungeons. The game setting objects contains several different objects that create the experience of the game. Game settings, controls chat and player death behavior. Team settings allows us to create two teams, the players who are competing in the dungeon and the AIs who are attacking them. Respawn settings determine where players will respawn when they die. In this case, the respawn point is always in the lobby, but you can add additional spawn points to change where players respawn, like checkpoints. The resource persister server allows us to keep track of player gold and health across different connections. The equipment persistent server allows players to maintain their weapons across different connections. The basic level progression it contains objects for each of the levels that determine the amount of XP required to reach that level and the amount of HP hit points that players have when they progress to that level, allowing players to become more formidable as they progress. You can change these by selecting the level object and opening the properties window and changing the values of required XP and max HP. The loot drop factory contains a list of all of the different loot that is dropped by the players and their relative commonness. You can change what object is actually dropped by changing the template that it contains and the frequency. If you'd like to see any of these objects, we can find these templates and drop them into the lobby to experiment with picking them up. You will not want to keep that in the lobby because each time the player connects, they will be able to pick it up again. So we'll select this template that was just added and delete it with the delete key. Combat dependencies are what allow the AIs to take damage and give damage. And the third person camera settings contains the control settings. So these can be used to change where the player faces relative to the camera and how they aim, as well as different settings about navigating the world, like the ground friction and jump height. This can also be substituted for any of the camera settings and core content for a dramatically different player experience. Keep in mind that changing these will change what the players are able to view in the scene and may prevent them from being able to use essential functionality, like a portal, for example. We'll restore the third person player settings for the purposes of this project. The UI settings contains all of the information that the players see on screen. The abilities in the right hand corner, their gold in the top right corner, the number of players connected to the lobby in the top left corner, and the hit points, XP, player icon, and equipment in the bottom left corner. There is also the named location display shows up in the top left corner telling players where they are um, and the kill feed will announce when players die in the game. We can press the eye icon to hide this now in the project. To see the project more clearly. 
The map object contains everything that is visible in the project. Environment includes the sky, which is the primary source of light in the project, with the exception of some of the candles. So if we hide this, we'll see that we can see glowing portals and candles and very little else. Press V to toggle, seeing spawn points and triggers in your game. The lobby contains everything that we saw when we first arrived, including the example fantasy props, the dungeon teleporters, the walls, the world labels, the shop, and uh, the spawn pads. The dungeon contains everything that we've seen in the dungeon, including the interior walls and AIs and obstacles. The wall references the outer wall. The ground is all of the ground except for in the boss chambers. And the kill zone is not visible unless V is toggled. And this kills players if they accidentally get outside of the boundaries of the project in order to reset them back to the lobby. Finally, the nav mesh is a complex object that defines where AI are able to walk. We'll discuss this in more detail, but the important thing to know now is that this is a series of planes that are used to define the AI walkable space that are set to be invisible by default, but can be made visible by selecting the nav mesh, opening the properties window, and finding the visibility property and changing it to force on. You can now see the planes that define where AI are able to walk. And that's it. In the next video, we'll discuss how to customize the textures on the objects in the dungeon to make them more realistic and immersive experience in your game.